Hi everyone, Rebecca the Frugal Resinista here. Today I am going to make a clock with resin. This was actually not my next plan on my list of videos to make, but I was at Target yesterday and they have these for only $8, it's these blank clocks, and they come with the hands and everything, and just so you can see, the clock part itself is actually built in and just takes a battery, so I thought, well this is cool, it's already put together, ready to decorate. So I am going to open this up and then I am going to use my Valspar bonding primer to seal the wood because I don't want any of my resin to leak into that and then lose some of the look. So here we go. dry and then I went ahead and used my testers brand enamel paint in metallic gold and I painted all the way around the edge. I usually show you guys everything I do on video but I figured you watching from here while I paint the edge wasn't really anything to see. I'm going to take the little hands that come with this and also paint those with the enamel paint because the enamel leaves a really nice finish. Obviously these are really cheap hands because this was an eight dollar clock so I'm kind of trying to um get them to be flat and not bent at all. They weren't too bad, but a little bit. So I'm going to fumble through this. I'm not quite sure how easy it's going to be to hold these. Obviously I can't paint without painting myself, so maybe I'll stick a glove on and just see how I do here. How do you set this thing down? Not like that! <laughs> I'm guessing there's a better way to do that, but clearly I do not know what it is. Enamel paint takes a while to dry to really harden, so I'm going to give this a while because I'm going to be putting paint tape around the edge of this. Oops, Ooh, I'm having all kinds of trouble. I'm going to be putting paint tape around the edge of this, and so I want to make sure that my enamel is completely dry before I stick the paint tape to it. I've let this sit for a day and completely dry. You can now see the enamel paint that I used is dry, and I'm able to stick painter's tape on it now. So I'm going to do that. I think, despite the fact that I dropped these and messed with these like crazy, I think the hands turned out okay. So I'm going to set those aside as well, but the gold worked great, and we'll use that toward the end. So let's do some taping. a few requests for people asking me to show them how I do the back and the sides and the bottom of my pieces. So I'm going to show you guys that at the end and show you how I finish the underside edge and all of that. What I've chosen to do for this project is I've lined my tape up right against the edge because I'm not trying to keep the resin from falling off of this one. I want it to so that it moves naturally and I don't want it to the tape to be up high so that I create a dam because then my edge is going to be uneven where the resin lays and then I won't have as much of a choice on if I'm going to pour a top coat or not and I can't get this too thick because of being able to stick the hands on it and have it move around, I only have so much space for that little part to come up through the middle. So I'm going to try to do this in one layer so that I have that space. So I've got my tape right on the edge here. I'm going to let things pour over. A tiny bit will probably get in there and I will touch that up with more paint. But um, for the most part, I think I've got it stuck down pretty well. So I am going to get my resin ready and we will start pouring. I think I say this just about every time, but before I start pouring, I'm going to do one other thing. I have this hole in the middle, but I've decided the way that I want to do this is with kind of a puddle pour. It's going to be a geode look, but not quite a geode. I'm not trying to make it officially a geode because I don't want to have all the stones, obviously, or the hands will hit them. And so I picked some cool metallics just to mix together and see what it looks like. But what I'm doing is, just with my glue gun real quick, I'm going to put... A little layer of glue in this hole. I'll have to do it a little bit at a time so it gets hard. 
but what I'll do is pour over the top and then with my razor blade I'm actually going to just pick that out when I'm finished so that the hole is still there but I don't want resin going into the hole I don't want to lose resin through the hole but obviously I need to do something with it so we'll do that real quick and then I will tell you what colors I'm using Okay, well, we'll see how easy that ends up being to get back out of the hole, but it will at least definitely be easier than resin. So I will work on that at the end. I don't know if you could tell, but I was flipping this back and forth because as it got cold and hard, I didn't want it to fall out the bottom. So I was just kind of going back and forth like this. I've never tried this before, so I have no idea if that's a good method or not, but we'll see. It's a little further on this side, so I'm going to let it sit for a second. And I'm going to mix my resin. I'll be right back. My resin is mixed. As usual, I'm using Stone Coat Countertops Quick Coat, and the colors that I'm using today are Pearlex Powdered Pigments in Duo Blue Green and in Reflex Violet. And then I am using Tester's Enamel Paint in Metallic Gold. And if you haven't seen my other videos, this stuff is so cool because once you mix it, it slowly floats to the top and gives a lot of depth and dimension to your piece. And I'm using just a 50 cent apple barrel paint. This is called Pavement. It's a black, but I really like this because unless you want that complete dark, dark black, this one's just one step up. So it's almost like the tiniest bit of gray in the black just to make it not look quite so harsh. And like I said, I don't usually do these colors, but I thought something bold would be really cool to do for a clock. So I am going to start pouring. So my torch finally gave out on me the other day and I have to go pick one up this afternoon but just to show you guys this is super not fun to do but you can pop your bubbles with any kind of flame it just takes forever this way. ahead and add one more thing to this. I really love how this is turning out, but I have some clear left and sometimes when you pour like this and do the puddle, one color will get swallowed up by another and what's really cool is if you go back and pour clear, colors will show up from underneath and it'll have a 3D effect. And again, since I can't pour a second coat over this because it's got to be underneath the clock hands, that's going to give me that good, really 3D look that I'm going for. I think I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit of sparkle to my clear as well. I have from Stone Coat Countertops their white glitter, and I'm going to add a little bit to the clear and just pour a few circles and tip it one more time, give it heat one more time, and this will be finished. dry for about eight hours. I'm really happy with how it turned out for the most part. I have this issue with round. I, I really struggle with pouring my resin on round surfaces and I don't know why that is. I think I want things to be too even. So at first I wasn't too happy with the fact that this feels a little elongated but when I was tilting it I really couldn't tip it anymore to have this stuff coming off the sides without too much of this being lost and everything. And so I, and now that I've let it sit, I really like it. So I'm happy with it. And I'm going to add lines still around here. So I think that's going to, in my brain at least, make this look like it's expanded a little more once there's some gold lines over here. So as I'm looking at this closer, I have a feeling that my glue plan is not going to work. 
<laughs> and I'm guessing I'm going to try to pick some of this out, but I'm guessing that I'm going to end up needing to use my drill and just drill through it. So I will get to that. But a lot of you have asked me how to do edges and how to do tape and that tape is frustrating um, is really a common thing that I've gotten a lot of comments on. So I thought that for today, I would really talk you guys through the edges and the underneath of what I do. And you've also asked a lot about how to hang things. Unfortunately, in this one, I'm not going to be able to address that because the clock piece that fits in this is already ready to hang. It's got a hole in it. But for my next project, I will show you guys how to hang as well. So I've got the tape on the edges here. Also, I have some awesome drips that are going to be fabulous jewelry. But the tape on the edge, I'm going to start by just peeling some of it and seeing how it does Along here where you can kind of see the gold where I had painted, I think it's going to peel off pretty easily. But the trick to this, you guys, is for these bigger spots where there's a lot more, you just want to add heat to it first. And if you add enough heat, your tape should peel off. Now, again, I'm stuck with this darn thing because my torch pooped out on me. So we'll see. You guys might get to see <laughs> me prove that what I say about how sometimes this doesn't work according to plan is true. So I'm going to start peeling this off. Well, I guess this one isn't a super helpful teaching tool because this actually came off a lot easier than I was expecting it to, which is wonderful. If I had to venture a guess, I think it's because I used the enamel paint and you guys can probably tell on the camera it took a lot of the paint off and I will have to do another layer of paint to make this look good around the edges but that is fine I'm not worried about that at all I just didn't want to have the wood untreated around here and then stick my tape on because it is so much harder to peel it off of plain wood so we'll do a second layer of that and then I'm going to draw my lines as well now I waited on purpose to draw my lines until after the tape was off because I wasn't sure if I would be able to see where the lines start and stop. And also, I didn't need to in this case, but if I had to heat it up to get the tape off, I didn't want to melt any of the acrylic paint lines that I poured. So that's why I waited. I'm trying to decide if I mess with this hole first. Maybe I should mess with the hole first because I don't know how much work that's going to be and if it's going to mess anything up. So eh, let's go for it and see what happens. I can tell already this is a mess. Oops, I got drips sticking. So let me pause and I'm just going to get my drill and we'll drill the hole out. Okay, I chose a drill bit that was just a little bit smaller than my hole because I don't want to accidentally mess with the wood or anything. So I'll start with that and then get bigger as I go once I know that I've gotten through the resin okay. This is just a piece of scrap MDF board from a project I did a few videos ago that you guys saw. And I'm laying that underneath so I don't drill into my table. This isn't a huge deal, but I'm also going to just use a paper towel and set it in between these two things. I can even do it like this, just because I don't want to scratch my newly poured resin. I'm going to draw my lines now, and I'm not really going to go crazy with this because this is small already and I've got some cool little lines in it, but I'm just using a Craftsmart brand metallic gold acrylic paint pen and this one is extra fine tip. I like the fine tips the best unless I'm working on a really big project. So like I said I'm going to go a little bit into the black and other than that I don't know if you guys can tell with the camera angle but where I poured my clear around this purple especially there's a really good 3D look so I'm going to put some lines over that so you can definitely see the height difference and then I will repaint my edges for that second coat and we'll be about finished. Once it all dries, I will see how hard it is to put this together as a clock. does it. I'm really happy with how that turned out. One more thing is I was drawing the lines over my edges here that I want to show you guys real quick before I paint and give you a close-up and finish this whole thing is that in a couple spots 
I did have a little bit of resin leak. Let me find where I'm talking about. I don't know how well you can see it, but there are just a few little drips here along the edges that are hanging down. Because they're so small, all I have to do is use my razor and push right along the line where I want them to come off. I'm just going to push down and then I'm going to scrape. And be careful because you don't want to accidentally hit your other hand with this. But see, I just scrape and then it's gone. So I'm going to do that around in just a couple little spots that need to be done. And then when I paint my next layer of enamel paint, that'll all disappear where it looks like some of the paint's chipping off. All right, I'm gonna paint this and then we'll come back for the end. The next thing I'm gonna do is add just a few numbers to this clock so it's a little easier to read. Now, if you guys follow me on Facebook, I asked you on Facebook what you thought I should do to add the numbers or if I should skip it completely. And I got a lot of wonderful ideas from you guys, but quite a few people suggested in the Roman numerals. And then Michelle mentioned that I should do alternating colors. So in the black section, have gold colors and in the lighter sections have the black colors. So this is what my plan is going to be here. And thank you so much. I used my Cricut machine to cut these out so I was able to pick my own font and everything. Um, Cricut machines are super fun but they're a totally different subject and I'm not going to get into that today but you should check them out because they're super fun and they do things like this. So what I'm going to do is flip this over and make sure that I have 90 degree lines so that I can put my numbers exactly evenly. I've already got this the way I want it, so I'm going to try really hard to um, flip it exactly. Thank you guys for the suggestion. I love this. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is add my hands. And honestly, I haven't read the instructions yet. And then I realized that I used the instructions to test my paint marker on. So. As always, thank you so much for watching, you guys. I'll give you a close up here. Thank you to all my new subscribers. You guys are fabulous. I blew past 7,000 subscribers and I appreciate that so much. Don't forget to like my Facebook page where you can get in on things like asking questions about this kind of stuff and where you can see what I have for sale. And also find me on Instagram as the Frugal Resonita. If you haven't subscribed, I would love for you to do so so you can join me on my art journey. Have a great day.